Hello YouTube, welcome back. My name is Logan Albright and I'm here with another book review for you on this fine Easter Sunday evening. Today I want to review the complete short stories of Ambrose Bierce. Ambrose Bierce was a weird guy. He was an American uh, writer, soldier, revolutionary potentially. He wandered off into the Mexican wilderness in 1914, never to be seen again, which is the way I like my ghost story writers to end. I like them to disappear mysteriously. As you will recall, Edgar Allan Poe had a mysterious death as well, so that bodes well. And I picked up this book largely because I was interested in um, Beers coined a few terms, a few names that were later picked up and used by Robert Chambers, who wrote The King in Yellow, uh, which is a classic horror story, and then later by H.P. Lovecraft, who I'm sure you all know. So Beers was very influential on these guys, and I wanted to find out the source of those names and read some of his own stories, so I picked this up. This volume contains his complete short stories. It's published by Bison, which is always a good publisher, and it's divided into three sections. Stories of horror, stories of war, and tall tales. The tall tales are kind of silly and lightweight and weird, and some of them are good, but mostly they're kind of disposable. The stories of war are uh, quite grim. They're very anti-war for the most part, very uh, bloody and violent um, and dark. Uh, the, the most famous one of those stories is, of course, An Occurrence of Owl Creek Bridge, which is very famous and was made into a Twilight Zone episode. It's been parodied on Family Guy. It's basically about a story, uh, a soldier who is about to be hanged and what goes through his head right before he's about to be hanged. Um, I won't spoil the ending for you, but it's a uh, amazing kind of very different kind of story. But apart from that, I wasn't crazy about the war stories. Where I, my bread and butter, what I like is the horror stories. So I'll co concentrate on those. Now, I've read a lot of horror short stories and I've uh, reviewed a lot of them for this channel. I've talked about lots of different styles of ghost story and lots of different authors. Uh, what I like about Bierce's stories is that they are, they are very American and they're very frontier horror stories. A lot of the British ones I've read are very parlor, drawing room. There's a lot of dusty old castle. There's a lot of empty forest. There's a lot of those type of settings. Um, this is very different because Beers was a product of the American frontier, pioneer spirit out west when there was really not a lot to see out west. Uh, so you get a lot of that kind of emptiness and unknown in his stories, which I think is, is a great addition to the, the horror canon. You know, it's a different different kind of setting than what you usually see. I've talked before about Algernon Blackwood, who wrote what I call nature horror. He's very interested in the natural forces and, you know, the spirits of trees and of the wind and of snow and of deserts and things like that, which is a great genre all on its own. This is a little bit different than that. It's about that uneasy feeling when you're on the edge of civilization and you're spreading out into things that you've never seen before and you don't know what's out in the darkness. And I think Beers does a good job of capturing that in these stories. I think he does a good job of uh, portraying the fear you would feel if you were really out on the edge of the American West in the 19th century in a log cabin that you built yourself, looking out uh, from a fire into the darkness where there's all kinds of animals and there's all you don't know if there's people out there, you don't know what's out there. And that kind of fear of the unknown, which I think is the essence of all horror, all horror is based on the fear of the unknown, is uh, a great way that Ambrose Bierce captures the scary in a way that a lot of other authors I've read haven't done. So as I've commented before, I tend to uh, appreciate British horror or British book writing a little bit more than I do American in general, but I do think this is a worthy addition to any horror story collection, and I like the different style. I think it gives a whole different perspective on what is scary and what scares us. So I'm very happy to have read these stories. I can't really give this uh, volume an unreserved recommendation because a lot of the stories are very similar. I think it's not a good thing to kind of binge read. It's one thing to read one story at a time and come back. There's an awful lot of, um, you know, you see something weird and you see some people doing something strange and then it turns out the day later that they died three days earlier. Oh, and they were ghosts. That kind of thing is a little bit tired. He does that a lot in these stories. But when the stories are good, they're really good. And I think he does a great job of capturing, uh, like I said, the spirit of the American West and the pioneers and the unknown of what's going out when you're, when you're bordering on a frontier. So those are the complete stories of Ambrose Bierce. He was a weird guy, an interesting guy. He's definitely worth checking out. Certainly influential to other writers. Uh, not the best short story collection I've ever read. Not uniformly good, but there's certainly gems in here. And if you're interested in the genesis of a lot of these ideas and some of the names that are used in, like I said, Robert Chambers and Lovecraft, certainly worth checking out. 
Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back next week with another book review for you. And if you have any recommendations for me or you want me to review anything or you have anything to say at all, feel free to leave it down in the comments below and I'll read it and I'll respond to you. And please, if you're enjoying my content, like and subscribe. I know it gets old me saying it, but I'm going to say it again. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.